Hello everyone, I am Jitendra sir and in this module I am going to explain you about decision control statements in Java. While executing programs, sometimes it becomes necessary to change the order of execution of certain statements and for given conditions, we require certain logical decisions. For making decisions, we use decision control statements and in Java we have got four kinds of decision statements. These are if statement, if else statement, if else if statement, switch statement, that is a switch case. Now let us learn this one by one. The first statement is the if statement. If statement is a statement which checks whether the condition is true. If the condition is true, it executes the expressions that are followed inside the block. The syntax of if statement is, we write if and inside parenthesis we give the condition. If the condition is true, the expression written within this block gets executed. Now let's demonstrate this with the help of flowchart. If the test condition is true, the result will come as per the block and this expression get executed and the desired output is obtained. If the condition is false, the program will directly come to an end and there will be no output. So here is an example, a sample program to explain if statement. I have made a class, results, main function, and I have declared a variable marks, which is of integer type, and I have stored a value 15 here. If marks is greater than equals to 40, so here in the if part I have given the condition, marks is greater than equals to 40. For this case, marks value is 15, and 15 is greater than equals to 40, this condition is false. So this will not give any result. Next, we'll talk about if else statement. If else statement is like true false statement. If, and then we give the condition. If this condition is true, expression one is executed. And if this condition gets false, in that case, the control moves to the else part. And whatever is defined inside the else block, will get executed. Let's demonstrate this with the help of a flowchart. If the test condition is true, it will execute expression one. If it is false, it will execute expression two. And finally, it will give the desired output. Now, we'll have an example for if else statement. Int marks equals to 15. And the same program I'm explaining here, if marks is greater than equals to 40, it will print pass. That means this statement will be executed. And if this statement is false, it will check for this. Now as per this program, the value of marks is 15, and 15 is greater than equals to 40. So this condition is false. So the control will move on to the else part, and it will print failed, because this statement will be executed. These things I'll be explaining you in the practical implementation. The third statement is if else if statement. If else if statement is also referred as if else if ladder. Here the statements are executed from top to down and it's a multi-conditional statement. Like here, we give if and we give the condition. If this condition holds true, the statement one gets executed or else it will move on to the next part that is else if part. In the else if part, it will again check for another condition. If the condition is true, the corresponding statement will get executed. And if it is false, it will move on to the next subsequent else if, and again it will check the conditions. This process continues till all the else if ends. And if finally there is no case satisfied, so in that case, it comes to the else part, and whatever is written inside the else part gets executed. Now let me explain this with the help of a flowchart. Suppose test expression, or you can say test condition is true, statement one gets executed and gives the result. Suppose test condition one is false. Then in that case, it will check for test condition two. If test condition two is true, it will execute statement two and give the result. And suppose test condition two is also false. In that case, it will move on to the test condition three. Here, statement three gets executed and it will give the output. And if test condition three is also false, in that case, it will the control will go to the body of else, and finally, 
it gives the output as per the statement given inside the else block. Now see, here I have a program. Here I want to explain about divisions obtained in examinations. Like suppose here I have initialized m as a variable which is integer type and we have initialized m with 45. Here I have used if else if statement. In the first if part here I have mentioned if m is greater than equals to 60. So as per this condition, m is equals to 45 and 45 equals to greater than equals to 60 is false. So this statement will not get executed. The control will move on to the else if part. Now this condition will be checked. 45 is greater than equals to 50? No, this is also false. So this statement will also not executed. It will move on to the next else if part. m is greater than equals to 40. Now this time it is true because value of m is 45 and 45 is greater than 40 is true. Also, 45 is less than 50, this is also true. So, this statement will be executed and will get output as third division. Clear? Next, we'll talk about switch statement. Switch statement is basically a multi-way branch statement. It is mainly used for menu-driven programs and it is basically used to uh, execute to different parts of code based on value of expressions. That means it has cases defined inside and based on the cases, the statements gets executed. This is the syntax of switch case. We write switch and inside parenthesis, we give the expression. Expression means the case value. Like suppose I write here case value two. So in that case, this will send the control directly to case value two and whatever will be written inside this case value two will get executed. Suppose I write here case value three, in that case, the switch will send directly the, to the case three and whatever statement will be written inside case value three will get executed. And <clears throat> rarely if it happens that none of the cases satisfy, the control moves to the default case and whatever statement is written inside default case gets executed. Now, you have to remember certain things while using this <coughs> switch case. <coughs> when we are using default case and <coughs> we are using switch case, we have to note that the case values should not take duplicate values. Like here, once I've initialized case value one, case value two. So again, I cannot initialize case value three, case value four, etc. Because uh, we can use case value three and four, but we cannot use case value one and two because this we have already used once. And another one is the default statement is optional. That means default statement, we may or may not give this default statement and it will not throw an exception or an error because this is an optional part. It basically checks for the condition if none of the condition satisfies, then only the conditions goes to the default case. And for every case, we define a break statement break statement in the case like uh, case one is executed after that we use a break statement so that the control moves out of the switch case otherwise if you don't use this break in that case after executing case value one it will also execute case value two case value three and so on so if, if you don't use break so the purpose of break statement is that it takes the control out of the switch case after the case value is executed This is the flowchart of switch case. It sends to the particular case as per the switch condition. Suppose it is case value two, so it will directly send to case value two and it will get executed. Suppose the case value is three, it will directly send to case value three. If it is true, it will execute. If it is false, it will move on to the next part. So A is a program to demonstrate, to illustrate the switch case. I've used a variable i, which is integer type and it is initialized with a value three. I'll use switch three. So this will directly send the control to case three. Now case three, we have a statement system.out.println Tuesday. So we will get output as Tuesday because the case value three is satisfied. So it will directly move to case value three. It will display this as the result and we have used break statement. So the control will move out of the break from here. Okay. Suppose this value is four. So in that way, in that case, we have not defined case value four. So in that case, it will move on to the default case and it will display this result. 
this expression will get executed as invalid option. We'll get an output as invalid option because we have not used case value for here. Clear? Now let's move on to the practical implementation. So first I'll demonstrate if statement. I have a program here for if int marks equals to 15. So marks is greater than equals to 40. This condition is false. So this statement will not get executed. I compile this program and I'll run this program. I'll not get an output. Terminal window will not show any output because the condition is false. We have no score for the else part. Okay. Now, let me show you the <coughs> next program. That is if else statement. Now here in this case, I have used this part. Same program I've used, but I've used else also. Marks, the value is 15. If marks is greater than equals to 40, this statement will be executed. And if it is false, this will come. Now as per the condition here, the value of marks is 15. So 15 is greater than equals to 40. This condition is false. So this statement will not be executed. This will be executed. Now let me compile this program. After compiling this program, when I run this, I'll get an output as failed. The reason is I'll run this program. I'll get an output as failed because the condition is as per this condition, this is false. So this statement got executed. Now let's move on to the next program. We will have if else if statements. So this is the use of if else if statement here. And here the value of m is 45. If condition will be checked, 45 is greater than equal to 60. Condition is false. So it will move on to next part that is else if part. And again it will check 45 is greater than equal to 50. No, it is false. So it will move on to the next else if part. 45 is greater than 40. Now this statement is true. So this statement will get executed. And if we compile this program, we'll get the output as like this in the terminal window. Output would be third division. I have not cleared this. Output will be third division. Because here this condition got satisfied and it is displaying third division. So that's why I'll get a result as third division. Clear? Now I'll make a small change in this. If I make this value as 65, 65, in that case, 65 is greater than equals to 60. So this statement will be true. So this statement should get executed. Now let me check. I'll compile this program and I'll run this. When I'll run this, I'll get output as wait. I'll get output as first division. So this is how we use if else if statements. And now we'll be using switch case. In switch case, I have used here variable i, which is integer type. Its value is 3. Switch i, that means it will send the control to third case, that is case 3. In case 3, statement Tuesday is there. System order print in Tuesday. So this statement will be printed and it will come out with a break statement. Now if I compile this program, I should get output as Tuesday. So it is Tuesday. 
Uh, if I make some changes in this program, in this program, if I make it as two, instead of three, I'll make it as two. So in that case, after compiling, I'll run this program and output is Monday. The reason is in this part, when I write here I equals to two, switch to, so this will send the control to case two and this statement will be executed. So we're getting output as Monday. Now I have used here five cases. Suppose I use here eight, the value of I is eight. In that case, none of the cases will satisfy. So the control should go to the default case. Now let us see what should be the output. Yeah, invalid option. The reason is I have used default in the default statement. I have written invalid option. So if none of the cases get satisfied in switch case, the default case gets executed and we get the output like this. So this was all about decision control statements.